Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software. We're going to start talking about branching now in our series, our video series on source control. Uh, this is a big subject. It's actually a big subject within a big subject. So source control is really big. And then within that branching is really big. And uh, so we want to spread this out through uh, to uh, multiple videos to really go through it in depth and explain it. So uh, this is, and it's a really important subject. If you're not using branching yet, you really, I would encourage you to really look into it because it can, really alter for the, for the better uh, how you're working with source control. Now, we are focused in these uh, videos on branching. We're focused on Git as opposed to the other source control providers because Flare isn't supporting branching, even though those other providers might have some form of branching that they're using. Flare isn't supporting those. It's just Git. So that's really what we're focused on here. All right, so what's coming up in this video is I'm gonna just talk briefly about what is branching and then why you might wanna use it, why you probably want to use it. And then I will let you know what's ahead in the next three videos where we're gonna break this down even further. All right, so let's get going and talk about what is branching. So branching is, it's been called a pointer to a snapshot of your file changes. And I can already hear it out there. Huh? What? Uh, maybe it helps if you, th I think about it as a variation, a variation from the original or the main condition of your files. All right. So, and if that's, that doesn't get there, um, Branching, you, so you, most people think when, when you hear branches, you think of a tree. Okay, so you can think of a tree analogy, although it's not exactly like a tree. So you have maybe, so a tree has the trunk and then up, you know, of course, there's lots of branches. Well, it's sort of similar in that you have a main branch. So you can think of this you know, thing running right through the center all the way up. It's your, it's your main branch. It's like your original state of your, your changes of your files. And then periodically you'll have growing out of that trunk, you'll have these other branches and they're working their <laughs> Does, does this qualify as yoga? What I'm doing right now? I don't know. Um, so you have growing out of the, the main uh, trunk or main branch here, you got these branches that are just working your way up, working, working their way up. And so you might be making different changes um, to the files there and they're, they're going up, going up, going up. But the difference between a tree is the branches just kind of go out and there's other branches from those and they just kind of end. Whereas in this, the branches are going up and then at some point they can merge back into that main branch or they can merge into other branches. Any branch could actually technically merge into any other branch. So that is, that's one way to think about branching. The thing is, the more you learn about it, the more it will hit home, that it will make sense to you. But yeah, that's that's what it is. You've you've got um, you got multiple branches, and you can have as many of them as you want for your project. And you're just kind of working separately in these until you're ready to come back and join together into another branch. So why use branching? Why deal with this at all? You might be already thinking, well, that sounds kind of complicated. Well, it's it's really not. It might seem that way at first, but it will make more and more sense. Why why even go through the bother? Why, why do that? Well, there's some really good reasons to do it. Branching allows you to engage in continuous parallel development, all right? So you're working in your Flare project, and you got an 
end goal in sight? Well, <clears throat> normally flare projects, uh, they, they don't really just kind of expire. It's you're, you're doing constant, you're doing releases. You're creating output and publishing output periodically depending on what your company's needs are. So take uh, software. Maybe you're using Flare to write online help systems to describe software application. All right. So as most people know, software applications, you start out and you got version one of that. And then it moves on and you got version two and then version three. Um, maybe you don't, they're not called versions, but they're, they're always improving. They're always adding things to that software application, improving it. So in a technical writer's or an author's world, you are given all of this information about what is supposed to be part of a release cycle all of the things that people are working on. You have, people have these grand plans. We're gonna do all these features. We got plans for 30 features, but in reality, you can't do all of them all at once. So you have to pick and choose what's going to go in the next release. And then what's gonna go into the release after that. And what's gonna go into the release after that. But a lot of times these things, the dust doesn't clear for a while and you're not sure what's going to go in the next release. So you still need to be writing about these different things, but you don't want them to all be written in the same place because at a certain point, somebody goes, hey, these features, one, two, and three, yeah, they're going to go in the next release, but four and five, now nah, we have to wait. And you're like, I already wrote them. They're, they're in there. And then you think, well, geez, what do I do? I put conditions on those to keep them out. What do I do? So branching lets you <clears throat> work in that way uh, much better so that each branch, each, each feature might be developed, written on a different branch. So they're just kind of outside of the mainstream. You're working on it. And you might be working on several branches at the same time. So it's parallel development, continuous development. You're, you're getting stuff done, but it's not until someone says, yeah, that's definitely going to be the next thing. Then you merge it in and it becomes part of this main, this main branch, this, you know, and you're ready to go forward. So that is a really, really, really good reason to use branching. Some people might try to tackle this using some other kind of non-traditional method. Maybe you think, well, we don't really know what to do. So we're just going to use a bunch of conditions and put them on things. You, you could do that, but it's, it's clunkier. It's, it's just not as streamlined. And, it, and you're probably going to end up with more user error um, doing that. So branching is a really, really good way to to be able to accomplish all these different things at once, but not have them all get tangled together. Uh, it's especially important if you're in an agile you know, environment where you're putting out, people are putting out constant releases, constant releases. Now, anybody who's been familiar with Flare knows that we'll put out two, maybe three releases a year. So it's not extremely agile, but we have features going on all the time and it's never certain what's going to go in the next release for a little while. But some people are much more frequent than that with the releases. I mean, very, very frequent. And this uh, allows you to work much better. Branching allows you to much work much better in a faster environment where you got to be able to pull the trigger and release things. Um, you know, when someone says this thing is going. All right, so agile. And another good reason to use branching is if you uh, have a Madcap Central license. <clears throat> I've talked about Madcap Central throughout this video series, and it's more than just this source control solution. There's all these things that you can do up on Central. You can build output you can publish the output, make it live, make it private for some uh, parts, uh, some audience, 
members, you can do topic reviews, send them to subject matter experts, other authors, and, and uh, have people reviewing topics all at the same time up on Central. Well, a lot of times the things that you want to be building output for or things that you want, especially topic reviews, you don't want these to be things that are um, uh, part of your documentation as it is already out there for the general public. It's, it's things that are in development, right? So you're not going to send topic reviews for things that are already out there. They're already published. The, you know, your audience can already see you're, you want topic reviews for things that you're still working on. And the best way to do that is to send those topics from a particular branch rather than your main master branch. It's, it's these other branches that are in development. And so central supports that. So when you send something from a particular branch, it goes up to central and then your subject matter experts, you know, it doesn't matter to them what branch it is. It's just content. And they're looking at it and they're making edits, but it matters to you because now you're able to keep that their edits, their changes, their suggestions in separate in that branch. And then for building the output, well, yeah, a lot of times you want to build the output from your main master branch, stuff that's ready to be published out there for the world to see or your audience to see. But sometimes you want to build output, you want to make it accessible, but you don't want it. it it's not, it's the output that is in a state of development, just like those topic files. So for example, I will build and publish output that's just meant internally for people in Madcap software. Um, anybody, anybody in Madcap software can go into this particular output and they can see what's coming in the next Flare release by looking at my documentation or the next Lingo release or the next Central release. And so I want to, I want that output to be based on a particular branch. All right, so you're able to, it's a lot more flexible, it's a lot more powerful to work with this, uh, to work this way with branches. So there are lots of re really good reasons to use branching. So what's next? The next video is coming up after this one. First, I'm gonna do a video on Git flow and branching. Well, what's Git flow? Git flow is a model for how to use branching. And because you don't want to just go, okay, I can create branches and work in branches and, and do it without any thought. You wanna have a plan. If you have a plan, um, things are gonna work much, much better. And once I learned this Git flow model, it made all the difference to me. And I liked it so much and I rely on it so much. Our, R&D and Madcap Software relies on it so much that I wanted to make it part of this video series to encourage people to, if they don't already have a plan to adopt, to maybe adopt this system. It's a really good way to look at using branching so that you're not just, <laughs> just doing things without thought and who knows what's gonna happen and what kind of mess you could end up in. After that, I'm gonna go into the main activities for um, for branching, because just like I talked about in previous videos for source control, there are certain things that are just the main things. That's what you do all the time. It's the same thing with branching. There are certain things that you're just going to be doing all the time with branching. You really, really need to understand those. So I'll go into those and um, into those activities and and show you in Flare how uh, how that works. And then beyond that, there, of course, are other activities, just like in, in the previous videos I did here with source control. In, in addition to the main stuff, there's extra stuff that you can do with branches. You don't have to, but you might find them useful. So that is what is ahead of us in the next few videos. So let's just kind of get going and I'll see you in the next video.